The jump from week 0 to week 1 in CS50 can be very challenging. That's why they recently introduced practice problems as a way to bridge that gap. Now before we move further, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to this channel for regular CS50 content. And without further ado, let's jump straight into the first practice problem, debug. So basically what's gonna happen here is they're gonna give us some code and our job is not to write code from scratch, but rather to correct problems with that code, right? They're going to give us faulty code and we have to kind of fix it to make it into a working program. The first things first is we need to go to code.cs50.io and log in using our GitHub account. So if you don't have that, I recommend just signing up. It takes two minutes. It's very simple. When you have that, it says to go inside your terminal window and type CD, right? Okay, and by the way guys, you won't have any of these uh, files on the left here. I have them because I've done other problem sets, but your left side is going to be completely empty. Let's type CD and enter. Okay, let's see what we do next. At the prompt type MKDIR debug, okay, which stands for make a directory called debug. Okay, make dir debug. And we'll see that suddenly there's a file that appeared here called debug. Okay, that's going to be your only file so far. Execute cd debug, which means change directory to debug. And again, that's not very important. You don't really have to know that, but that's what cd stands for. And now before the prompt, we see we have a debug here, which is good. They, they write the word debug. And then copy and paste this thing into your terminal window to download the slabs distribution code. Okay, whatever that means, we don't care. Let's go ahead and copy and paste it. Let's do what it tells us to. Okay, some fancy lines here. Again, we don't care about that. Let's go into our debug folder. Now that we care about and let's go into debug.c. Okay, and here's our code. Again, the objective is to become familiar with C syntax and learn to debug buggy code, right? So before we get into debugging it, let's try to understand what the program is trying to do. Let's go through line by line, include cs50.h. Okay, that's including the cs50 library. Int main void. Okay, that's the equivalent of saying when green flags clicks on scratched. It has a comment, ask for your name and where you live. It has a variable called name. And get string is used to get some string from the user, right? It's prompting the user for some input and says, what is your name? Okay, so the program should ask the user, what is your name? And then it has a variable called location and get string, where do you live? Okay, so we need to make a program that prompts the user and asks them, what is your name? And then ask them, where do you live? Okay, seems pretty straightforward. And then we want to say hello. So we want to print hello blank from blank. And these, when you see a percentage sign, that's called a placeholder. So we don't know what we want to say yet, but we know that we're going to get what we want to say from the user. So hello blank from blank and take these from name and location. So it basically means hello name from location. So let's say the user inputs, what is your name? They say David and you ask them, where do you live? They say Boston, right? So it's going to print out hello David from Boston. If you're completely new to programming, as most people are, we don't really know what's wrong with this code. Nothing really jumps out at us. So the easiest way to check what's wrong with the code is by trying to compile it. Okay, so let's clear this. How do we compile code is make and then the name of the program. So we literally type make and then the name of the program is debug, so debug. So let's compile it. Okay, and it immediately gives us an error. And let's try to sort of decode what this is saying. Debug.c 9 colon 5. Okay, so what this means, how do you read this is there is an error on line 9 in the fifth character. Let's try to read what the error says. Use of undeclared identifier name. So what does that mean? So over here, when you define a variable, you need to assign some sort of a data type to it, right? We can't just say name. What is a name? We need to tell the computer the name is indeed, as we know, we want to get a string from the user and store it in name. So name is obviously going to be a string, right? The computer doesn't know that. We have to tell it that. And that's what this error tells us here. Use of undeclared identifier name. So let's go ahead and type string name. So string name equals get string. What is your name? Okay. So we've solved that, uh, that problem. Let's go ahead and try to compile the program again. And again, we get another error. And let's try to read this uh, 952, which means it's on the ninth line, the 52nd character. And what's the error? It expected a semicolon at the end of declaration. Okay. And it literally says to insert a semicolon at the end of this, right? A semicolon in C is like a full stop in English. We have to say it. So let's go ahead and get the syntax correct. Semicolon here. Let's solve this error, right? And now we can kind of intuitively tell that, you know, we did this for name. Do we have to do the same thing for location as well? Well, let's go ahead and see. Let's go ahead and make debug, compile the code. And again, it says there's the error on line 10, use of undeclared identifier location. And again, that's because we didn't declare what data type location is, right? Just like we did for name, let's go ahead and say location is a string, right? And now 
do we need a semicolon to the end here? Well, it's kind of obvious we do, but just for the purpose of taking it step by step, let's see what the computer tells us. Let's try to make debug. And again, as expected, on line 10, there is another error. Expected semicolon at the end of declaration. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in. And by the way, guys, I'm doing this step by step so you kind of get the feel for how to read errors, right? How to interpret errors. So line 10, expected this, right? It's a bit vague, but as you do more and more of it, you're gonna get more comfortable with reading errors. Now, there's no clear errors, right? We don't know what, what else is wrong. So let's try to make debug again, compile the code. And okay, we see there's an error in line 13. Implicit declaration of function print is invalid. Okay, so if you remember from the lectures, when we wanna print something out, we don't say print, right? The function is called printf. In C, the function is called printf to output something. So if we were in Python, then print would be enough, but here we're doing in C, so it's called printf. Okay, so we made a printf. Now let's try once again to compile the code. And okay, we have an error in the same line, in line 13 again, with the same printf. So did we really solve that problem? Let's read the error message. Implicitly declaring library function printf. Hmm. And let's see what the solution is. They say to include the header standard io.h. Okay, so this time it literally gives us the solution, which is to include the header standard io.h. So the function printf is in the standard io library. Okay, so just like we included cs50.h, we now include standard io.h. And now let's go ahead and try to compile the program once again. Let's make debug. Okay, and we are met with another error. Okay, it's on line 14. Hello. Percent %i from percent %i. Okay, so there's an error here in the percentage. That's because percent %i is a placeholder for an integer, right? So hello percent %i from percent %i is wrong because the values that we want to input here are not integers, right? It's name and location, which are both strings, right? So a placeholder for a string is not denoted by percent %i, but rather percent %s. So let's replace these i's, okay? So hello percent %s from percent %i. S, again, because both name and location are strings. So hopefully we've solved it all here, make debug. And again, we get another error on line 14 again, problematic line here, expected semicolon after expression, right? We forgot to put the semicolon after the print, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. And now let's try to make our program again, make debug, okay, thankfully no error messages here. So let's go ahead and run the code. And how you run something is dot slash the program name. So in this case, it'll be dot slash debug, run it. Okay, what is your name? That's good, it asks us for a name. Let's say our name is David. Where do you live? Let's say Boston. Hello, David from Boston. Okay, so it seems to be working well here, but if you notice, it just looks a little bit ugly, right? Because it prompts us for new command on the same line, which doesn't look very nice. So let's try to create a new line. And how we create a new line in C is by typing backslash N. Now you wouldn't know this is not common knowledge. This is the syntax of C. And that's what we're trying to learn in this practice problem, right? So let's make a new line. Let's once again compile, let's make debug. Okay, it works, dot slash debug. Once again, let's say we're David from Boston. And hello, David from Boston. And this time, prompts us for a command on a completely new line. So it just looks a little bit better, right? It doesn't make the code more correct. The code was already correct. It just makes it a little more readable, a little more user-friendly. And now at the end of every problem set, we need to check our code, right? The way we do that, is using CS50's check50 function. Okay, so we, let's copy and paste this from Harvard's website, check50. So it's gonna go and check for the correctness of our code. So while waiting guys, please make sure to like this video if it was helpful. Make sure to subscribe to this channel with notifications on if you want me to continue posting these videos, right? I'm gonna be posting videos every single week. So please subscribe with notifications on, go ahead and leave a like on this video. Okay, all green, which means it's all good. And we've conquered this practice problem. Now this is one of the easier practice problems, right? The next one's gonna be a little more difficult. So stay tuned for that. That's coming in the next week or so. So make sure to subscribe with notifications on and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, David.